Well, since my last foray into a fictional sci-fi universe went so well, um, I decided to give my three main takeaways from Alien Romulus. Welcome to Peppers Glowworms. I watched Alien Romulus uh, two times, once in the original version and once in the German dub. Shout out to my good old pal who invited me to the German dub um, and sorry I forced you to su subscribe to this channel afterwards. Um, yeah, the German dub was okay. Of course the dad jokes uh, did not translate well at all, uh, but I found it uh, a nice touch that they did not use the literal translation for that one cring cringe-worthy uh, uh, reference there. You know what I mean? Get away from her, you bitch! Geh weg von ihr, du Hündin! Geh weg von ihr, du Sch Geh weg von ihr, du Mistvieh! So they used the line from the uh, original uh, German dub of Aliens. That was uh, kind of a nice touch. Uh, props to the uh, uh, dub uh, department or whatever. Okay then, uh, takeaway number one from Alien Romulus. It certainly felt like an alien movie uh, with lots of references to previous installments of the franchise and uh, I was, uh, you, you could say, emotionally in involved and I enjoyed it and all those silly little fan references, I ate them up, uh, well, except the one <laughs> that I previously mentioned, uh, you know, the, that, this one. Um, uh, but uh, in hindsight, um, this reminds me an awful lot of uh, that uh, Star Wars uh, sequels. Uh, the first one, uh, The Force Awakens, I also liked this one and it felt like a Star Wars movie. Uh, but uh, we all know where this led and now for the Alien franchise there's also a series uh, coming. So I'm a bit both hopeful and worried, uh, worried about the uh, Alien franchise. Uh, that's my takeaway and even the protagonist of the movie, Rain, just Almost just one letter away from Ray, a bit suspicious there. Hmm. Okay. I was even okay with that digitally resurrected uh, actor. Uh, uh, I, I enjoyed his character in the movie that he originally appears, uh, and the mm, mm, uncanny valley vibes can be justified since. Uh, it, he, the character is synthetic in nature, right? And the, uh, the, that, that hat in the original movie looked also a bit goofy, that, that prop. So I guess that can be chalked up as another reference, a poorly uh, <laughs> reconstructed head. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm taking away. And they had the decency to, to uh, consult the family of the uh, past actor. So I'm okay with that, I guess. Takeaway number two from Alien Romulus. Ah, so that's how cloning works in the Alien universe. Um, it appears that the facehuggers in the movie were 3D printed. Uh, there's a s um, blink and you miss it uh, scene where there's a display and it uh, reads something like a specimen completed, printing stopped. And um, it is later elaborated that the facehuggers were constructed based on samples taken from Big Chap. Um, so apparently they 3D print when they clone in the alien universe. That's now my headcanon and it helps a bit, a bit to hand wave away that whole thing in alien resurrection. Um, I think uh, they 
3D printed her as well, a uh, fifth, ele fifth element style, right? <laughs> layer by layer, and that's why she's adult. Uh, um, well, she appeared younger in one shot, but maybe they, um, it, it just works, it just works. So, and I can uh, explain it away a bit. Um, uh, it could work in theory, you could uh, print a whole organism. Um, I mean, we are already capable of printing very small uh, organs, like I think um, liver or kidney organoids, uh, basically uh, very thin layers of cells, um, but it works like the actual organ can be used as a replacement in studies and things like that. So um, my headcanon is that they um, derived the um, body plan of the facehugger from the sample they took from Big Chap and they were able to recreate all the needed cells and components and could uh, print them layer by layer because they knew how the facehugger should look like and uh, they just uh, put the cells where they are supposed to be and then voila we have a facehugger. Um, of course if they have that that deep knowledge of uh, the organism they could just um, recreate the cells that produce the substance that they are after, you know, the um, black goo-like stuff. Um, but uh, then the movie wouldn't have happened, so I'm glad they didn't uh, take that approach. Of course, the cloning in uh, Alien Resurrection is a bit problematic anyway, because uh, Ripley 8 has memories and they hand wave it away again. With, well, she... Uh, um, got inherited memory from the genome of the aliens, so, but uh, if that's the case, she would remember what the aliens remembered, right? Not what she remembered. So my headcanon was the uh, embryo inside uh, has a psychic connection to the host and learns everything that the host knows, but that's sort of my thing to just uh, imagine things, how this stuff could work in universe. Of course, <laughs> out of universe, it's just, well, the writers, um, don't really know what they do or they just, just want to produce a fun movie, let's say that. And also uh, using the concept of 3D printing, it's easier to explain away uh, why they cloned Ripley, Ripley, Ellen Ripley, but with the embryo inside. Um, when they used 3D printing, they just decided to print the uh, cells that had mostly or all, no, no, I guess only mostly alien DNA in the place where the embryo should be and the cells where there's mostly human DNA uh, in the rest of the body. So they just basically took the sample and sifted out the cells that were uh, in different stages of assimilation by the alien, I guess, and they uh, decided, well, I will print the embryo and the host around it and uh, that'll do. So that's my uh, attempt to fit it all together and hand wave, 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 lots of hand waving, but if the movie is good, which Alien Romulus uh, was in my opinion, I'm um, more likely to uh, suspend my disbelief and just enjoy the movie. So, 3D printing, that's how you clone. Got an idea. Ooh. What do we have here? Jackpot. <laughs> um, I guess I should leave now. Yeah. Takeaway number three. A band-aid for the cannon. Alien Romulus brought back the black goo, kinda but uh, in a mostly painless way, I'd say. I did not like the concept of it to begin with, um, just another pointless lost Lindelof mystery that uh, we don't really need. Anyway, the way it comes up in Alien Romulus heavily implies that the real deal xenomorphs came first and that the goo is a product derived from their biology or uh, biomechanoidology or something like that. This backs up the concept that David did not create the xenomorph, but merely recreated a version of the xenomorph. This is also downright stated in the novelization of Alien Covenant. I really hope they will keep it that way. Keep the xenomorph's true origin unknown or even unknowable in a Lovecraftian kind of way. 
a very much not pointless mystery in contrast to the silly putty, um, I mean the black goo. As for why the offspring sorta of looks like an engineer, I remember in Prometheus they established that engineer and human DNA uh, is identical or at least nearly so. Engineers also supposedly seeded life on Earth. Well, um, the writers of Prometheus seem to have about the same level of understanding towards evolution uh, or Darwinism, as they have it referred to in Prometheus, uh, as the writers of Star Trek. Meaning little to none. So my headcanon timeline for now, therefore, is 1. Humans modify themselves with black goo to become more resilient and uh, thus turn into engineers. 2. Engineers travel back to prehistoric Earth and seed it with life, which later produces humans but through normal evolution. 3. Time loop back to 1. Ah yeah, and maybe 4. Space jockeys are what engineers later turn into. Future future humans becoming more alien, basically. And one of them crashes on LB426, again involving some timey-wimey bullshit. Okay, I could do some more speculations here, but uh, long story short, human plus black goo equals engineer, mm, under the right circumstances at least. And engineers got their power from the goo that was given by the xenomorph, hence they worship it, explaining the mural in Prometheus. Um, Well then, to the future of the Alien franchise. Cheers. <coughs> uh oh.